There is a widespread and growing fascination with cryptocurrencies, specifically crypto coins. I think almost every day, the amount of people around us that are talking about it, that are fascinated by it, that are curious, intrigued, that are even tempted or even participating in it, is growing. Almost every day, I see more and more people jumping on the bandwagon or exploring it in some capacity. Even for our work at Empirics, we're seeing the same things as a lot of readers are asking us about it. A lot of interest in this area, and certainly myself, a lot of people asking me what are my personal opinions. So I thought tonight I could give you perhaps my own views that are based largely on our research and insights at Empirics. And the big question on everyone's mind is where's all of this going? Is cryptocurrency overall? Is it the future? Is it going to disrupt the financial markets, or is it a great big bubble? And this is something I've been asked many times. The question. On everyone's minds. So, to start off with, and to try and make this brief, what I feel, based on our work at Pyrex, is that the cryptocurrency and blockchain technology is truly very disruptive, and it holds so much potential to really change financial markets. I think it's safe to say, broadly, these technologies have really a very high chance. Of innovating, if not disrupting currencies themselves, at some point in the future, they just have so much、um, potential in terms of how disruptive they are and how they could actually in- improve financial markets in varying capacities as well. That thing, I think, is more or less, you know, this this thing that most people are excited about. It is a source of the fascination of most people and the excitement of most people. So that part, we share and understand the sentiment. However, in regards to the insane valuation of some of these crypto coins, and almost the widespread and the rapid emergence of all sorts of crypto coins and companies and exchanges and things related, that is where we are feeling slightly apprehensive. And I say this because. If you were to contextualize what is happening right now, then a lot of things actually raise certain concerns. Refer back to not more than thirty years ago, in leading up to the nineties, really, and at the time with the emergence of the internet, it was at that time that most people, almost all around the world, they were very excited and sold on the idea that the internet, which was emerging, was going to change the world. Change the world of business and economies around the globe. That was something that was equally exciting. And if you look at the sort of frenzy, they actually sort of match the crypto frenzy and they said the internet frenzy. So the dot com era, what we saw from this deep、um, excitement, this widespread excitement, was the emergence of many dot com companies. And the reason why is because, of course, with frenzy, with excitement comes investments, comes capital flows. And so a lot of companies were emerging, and a lot of investments were happening, and the valuation was also, you know, growing rapidly for many of these companies. And overall, in, in the market, we saw a lot of investments into these dot-com companies, and the, the whole idea of the dot-com era. But as what we've seen in that era, many of the companies they were main, largely, if, if not mostly. Valued based on speculation and based on the excitement. So, if you were to conduct a simple technical analysis, for example, looking at the PE ratio of some of these companies, they were just incredibly disproportionate to an insane amount. And if you really were to study the fundamentals of many of these dot com companies, it completely made no sense. But the valuation skyrocketed because we, at the time, we were all sold on the idea that again, the internet is the future, which. As we known from time through time, that turned out to be true. The disruptive potential of the internet was true, but by 1995, the bubble burst. The insane skyrocket valuations just burst one day because many of these companies were just highly speculative with no true fundamentals, and they cannot be sustained. At some point, the bubble burst, and a lot of people got burnt. Of course, there was an entire financial crisis from that. Now. I think we can learn a lot of lessons from the dot-com era and the dot-com crisis. 
because many of the frenzy that we're seeing right now, especially in terms of valuation of certain coins, they are too largely based on speculation and they involve too many investors, largely lay people who have no understanding of cryptocurrencies or really the technology itself, that there's almost no focus at all at, at looking at it from a fundamental point of view, just purely speculation. A lot of it may be purely even based only on news. And so the valuation at the moment for many of these coins, they don't make sense. They are truly high at the moment because of the frenzy, but then the question is whether they are sustainable. What we have seen in the past few years, especially at the start of the cryptocurrency craze, was that many, at many points it wasn't sustainable. There have already been many booms and busts already happening over a period of the past few years. And the reason why it's so almost so cyclical but yet so unpredictable is just because a lot of these coins, they are not really based on anything other than pure speculation. And what we have also seen as well is the emergence of all sorts of coins and these different platforms and companies that are just trying to really cash in on this craze, this frenzy at the moment. But I think for most lay people, for most of us, we of course are excited by the potential of the technology. But of course at the same time, what I'm trying to say is that we have to be still very cautious, especially if we're trying to approach this from a perspective of being an investor rather than a trader who is trying to profit from the speculation alone. And if we're going from that point of view, we really have to carefully study the coins themselves and see whether there really is a fundamental basis for some of the valuations at the moment. And that's the only way that we can pick which ones potentially would be a foothold of an actual future for this technology. And at the moment, not many would fit this bill. A lot of them are actually made just for fun, and yet they are valued insanely. And so you really have to question whether the valuation represents something that is currently being embedded into the financial markets or just something that's purely speculative and does not necessarily represent that many of these coins will actually be sustained in the future. So in sum, what we're trying to say is that try and realize the current valuations, they are, a lot of them are not sustainable. And if anything, there will be a lot of unpredictable busts. And if anything, if we're not cautious with the valuation, we might even see a bigger bust, especially one that we've already seen in recent history, not more than 30 years ago. It really is important for people who are very interested in investing, and I'm not saying speculative trading, but investing into some of these coins and really pour a lot of money into their savings to really consider the fundamental basis for some of these coins. A lot of people who are currently getting into it they have no understanding of some of the technologies, the ledger technologies, for example, that uh, define some of these currencies, and yet they're just in it purely for the sake of seeing headlines about it. And that currently marks most people. And sure, some people might actually make certain gain from doing that, but then again, you could do the same by gambling. So. What we're trying to suggest, and what a lot of our authors have suggested, is to take a more careful and analytical view, but also truly to look for a fundamental basis, basis, to go beyond the speculation and consider which of these coins actually have more potential for fu future usage in the market itself, and the usage rate. Of course, that's something that's very hard to predict, but certainly a lot of the more, you could say, hardcore or truly dedicated investors, that is exactly the rationale they're operating on. And that's also the rationale that's guided many of the you know, crypto entrepreneurs to set up certain platforms that are reflective of something that is, is more based in a more calculated prediction of a reality that's based on fundamentals. So in short, it is very important to be prudent. Definitely the cryptocurrency and the blockchain technology is just incredibly exciting and it certainly has such a potential to really disrupt and innovate our financial markets in substantial ways. But at the same time, because of the hype, many of us could actually be blinded by heavy speculation and more or less just hype that has actually driven many of the 
valuations. And as we've seen in recent headlines, a lot of them are not sustainable and a lot of people get burnt when they have no understanding of what they're doing. But yes, if you're interested, definitely stay tuned at Asia.